Welcome to Real Physics. Today I want to tell you about another wild speculative idea about the neutron. And it came to me yesterday, so maybe it's half-baked, maybe it's wrong, but I tell you nonetheless. So, you know that the neutron is heavier than the proton. If you put it in relation to the electron mass, it's for the proton, it's 1836.15, and for the neutron, it's 1838.68 something. Okay, so there is a considerable mass difference between the neutron and the proton, and you know, beta decay ejects the electron, but there is, uh, apart from the story of the missing mass, the neutron is just heavier, so you would expect um, something else to be emitted or a much heavier electron. Now, uh, if you do the calculations, it's uh, the difference between the neutron and the proton mass is exactly 2.53 electron masses. That's, as I said, very speculative and certainly against all contemporary understanding. But what about interpreting the neutron as a bound state of electron proton, just the electron surrounding it at a much closer distance? So this 2.53 you could interpret this as just the relativistic gamma factor of a much faster orbiting electron. If you do the calculations, then you, this orbiting electron would have a speed of something like 0.92 c, percentage of the speed of light, which of course leads to a huge centripetal force that needs to be compensated by a much smaller distance to the nucleus. If you do the calculations, I mean, 90% uh, of the speed of light with respect to the hydrogen atom, where we know that it's 1 over 137, the percentage of the speed of light. So it's kind of 125 times faster than in the usual hydrogen atom, this bound state, however we would imagine that. And if you do the calculations, the force would be like squaring that 125 times the mass increase and so on and so forth. So you have a much smaller distance of the order of 40,000 less than in the usual hydrogen atom, which of course is the Bohr radius, the usual distance in the. Now you divide the Bohr's radius by that factor of 40,000. And interestingly, what you get out is 1.32 times 10 to the minus 15 meters, which is the Compton wavelength of the neutron. Now, what is the Compton wavelength is defined. You equate Einstein's formula mc squared and you think about as a photon with the energy hf. Then you write that hf as hc over lambda. And then you solve for lambda and you get the Compton wavelength, which is h over c times the respective mass. And I think that is not circular, that is quite interesting, and I don't know if we can learn something from that. It could be that other people have thought this, I think it's not very difficult, it's kind of obvious if you want to examine that thought of a bound state. Let's see what comes out. Well, now I'm at home and I wanted to let the idea sink in a little bit and maybe check it more carefully. I had the suspicion that it might be circular, but it turned out it's not, so it's really something new. And as far as my research is correct, uh, nobody else had had the idea. So I decided to write a little paper, which today appeared in Wichra, you know, the alternative to archive, which is, let's say, not very open to new ideas. Anyway, let's walk through the paper. I show you what I have found in a more uh, detailed calculation. Uh, this is the way I prefer to uh, phrase it right now. Uh, the ratio of the, maybe a little bit uh, bigger, the ratio of the neutron and the electron mass is could be phrased in this way, uh, relating it to the fine structure constant. And uh, gamma is, yeah, the relativistic factor, 2.53 of the electron. And uh, at the same time, as I explained in the video, it is the mass difference of neutron and proton in units of the electron mass. So how did we arrive here? Well, a starting idea or let's say a general idea is the nuclear electron hypothesis. You want to understand better what is a neutron, what is the beta decay maybe. You want to understand better 
nuclear physics, that's a sideline because nuclear physics really doesn't compute anything you could verify in a quantitative manner. So anyway, I just say that the field should be open to new ideas, but I cannot claim that this is much of a new insight. However, if you think that uh, mass difference between neutron and proton is related indeed to the fact that the neutron is a compound state of a proton and an electron, this electron would have relativistic velocity and a increased mass by the factor of 2.53 approximately. Then you do a simple calculation. You have, you can calculate the velocity, which is close to the speed of light, something like 92%. And then you imagine a situation where you have this centripetal force equating the Coulomb force in this, well, very small contracted hydrogen atom. Of course, the mass of the electron is increased by the factor of gamma, but this is just the normal equation. Then you solve for the radius. And yeah, that was my observation. Wow, it's so close to uh, 10 to the minus 50 meter. Already the order of magnitude would be remarkable, but it's really almost the same than, than the Compton wavelength of the neutron. And yeah, this is, I think it's pretty remarkable, this coincidence but I try to rephrase it in yet another manner. If you solve, uh, if you assume this relativistic factor, you put it into the relativistic um, equation and you solve for the square of the speed and you can insert it above there, then you end up with this equation. And this equation, you see the R is in the denominator, but you can bring it up or no, you leave it in the denominator, but you uh, phrase it in another way, uh, you observe that this radius is very close to the Compton wavelength of the neutron, as I mentioned, and you write down the Compton wavelength. The Compton wavelength, by the way, is, yeah, you can visualize it by the idea the mass of any particle is just equivalent to the mass of a photon of determined frequency, and then you compute the respective wavelength, and that would be the Compton wavelength. Interestingly here, if you combine the numbers, you see popping up a lot of uh, epsilon naught, C and also H. So this brought me to the idea to introduce the fine structure constant here, which gives kind of a simplification. So you end up uh, with the ratio of the neutron and electron mass. In this case, this is 1838 point something, uh, just two pi over alpha, and then you have this a little bit weird combination of this factor gamma. It's not gamma directly, unfortunately, but it's uh, gamma minus one over gamma, approximately 2.13 something. Yeah, what's to note here that two pi over alpha is a very common thing. It's uh, often used in quantum electrodynamics, even if I don't like quantum electrodynamics for this reason here. But anyway, uh, yeah, something that could resemble a physical meaning, even if uh, the rest is not very transparent, how any reasonable theory could come out here. So that's basically almost to report. And while thinking about these numbers and uh, yeah, I noticed another little coincidence, which is even more strange, but I just reported here this uh, gamma 2.53 is indeed very close to the natural logarithm of four pi, which is kind of strange because you could transform that into log four plus log p, which doesn't make sense from a physical perspective. So I don't really believe that this has any significance, but well, sometimes we should just collect these coincidences and see what comes out. In general, I'm a little bit annoyed that many physicists have this arrogant attitude. Oh that's all numerology, we don't need that because after all people like Johann Jakob Balmer in 1885 did numerology and discovered spectacular things like Rydberg's constants, which is, so to speak, a condensation of all these unexplained spectral lines of the hydrogen atom. And also, which is maybe the best example, epsilon naught mu naught equals one over c squared, the famous coincidence first suspected by Wilhelm Weber and Kirchhoff in around, I guess it was 
1857 or something and of course then included in Maxwell's theory in 1864 and I mean you could also justifiably you could also call that numerology but this revolutionized our civilization this equation represents the unification of electrodynamics and optics <laughs> I'm not claiming this is a uh, on the same level but on the other hand I mean there is something to be discovered in nuclear physics Niels Bohr once said that he believes that for really understanding the nucleus we need a revolution which is similar to quantum mechanics that made us understand atomic physics to begin with so I think it's a good idea if we work in this direction and yes sometimes it's good to be in beautiful places for having new ideas in physics